This is Pete, M0PSX from Essex Ham, and I'm joined by Leslie Butterfield, callsign G0CIB. Some of you may know him from the ICQ podcast, but let me introduce the man himself. Hello, Leslie. Good evening, P- uh, Pete, and thank you very much for inviting me on. Nice to have you here. Now, we've got an interesting topic to talk about tonight. It's got a lovely, snappy title. We're talking about the implementation of measures to require compliance oh, with international guidelines <laughs> for limiting exposure to electromagnetic fields. I think oh. I've got that right. So, so what's going on? Tell me what the, what the latest is here. Okay, seriously now, uh, what's, what's been occurring is that uh, there's been a consultation on the subject. That's fact. And Ofcom have put something on their website that's basically saying that if you are running a transmitter, that's 10 watts EIRP, I'll get that correct, uh, or above, you have to carry out an RF assessment. So that's the um, the situation, and that's what they've put on their website. And I hope I've been as factual as possible on that. So let me get this clear. So any of us amateurs that operate over 10 watts, we're going to yes, have yes. to do something. Yeah, 10 watts are over, yeah. We're going to have to do something very specific about measuring our field strength. Is that right? Yes, you either have to measure it or calculate it. And this is going to affect all amateurs, isn't it? Yes. Okay, that sounds like it might be quite a lot of work. (laughs) Well, (laughs) oh, what? what, Yeah, like like I said, that I I had to get the migraine tablets on this when I when I first heard it because I thought ten watts. Hey. But we are where we are. Let's try and deal with this. Um, yes, it's 10 watts. Um, doesn't matter what situation you need in, whether you're at home or whether you're on a field day, you still have to do the assessment. Um, that's what it says. It's, that's the key question. 10 watts or above, you have to carry out an assessment. Okay, so from what I've been reading, I haven't read the full detail of this, but it sounds like in February of this year, 2020, a consultation uh, was released, and Ofcom's released a statement in uh, on the 5th of October, basically saying consultation round one is finished, and we're now looking at uh, at round two, Uh, but it seems that the decision has been made that this is going to have to be done. So presumably for, for the radio amateur, they're going to have to change the, the amateur radio licence, would that be right? Yes, they will. Um, that's uh, Well, there is a document which I dug out of the Ofcom website, and it says proposed measures to re- uh, require compliance with da 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 uh, electromagnetic field guidelines. And I'll just put it up here. Um, I'm still working through this document. There's a lot of technical detail here. It looks <laughs> like a riveting on... read, yeah. <laughs> oh, please. But... Um, that's what that's what they've published. Okay, so for any amateur at home, let's say they've, I don't know, like me, my typical situation here is I've got a bit of wire down the garden for my HF antenna, and I've got a 2 and 70 collinear up on the roof. So I have two antennas, they both radiate. What will I be expected to do if this goes ahead? You'll be expected to conduct a risk assessment. Uh, it can either be measured um, or calculated. From what I've been working out, um, calculation is probably one way of doing it. Um, it can either be done on the Ofcom website, because they've, they've put up a basic one at the moment. Um, it can either be done, I think there's some RF calculator things on the internet as well, uh, for the UK, I should add. And I've also been working on a spreadsheet, trying to work out in my own head what's happening. Um, However, I would add that the most important thing with this is if radio amateurs conduct what's known as good radio housekeeping, they've got a very, according to the the number crunching I've done, they've got a very, very good chance. There are exceptions, but they've got a very, very good chance of complying. And I'll give you two extremes. One is um, if I have a dipole, HF dipole, and I have a 10 meter mast and I'm running 100 watts on HF. I can tell you, because I've done the numbers, that that will easily comply. If, to take in the other extreme, 
you have a dipole in the loft and the RF's being and you've got no safety distance at all, you know, and the RF's being picked up on the mains wiring and it's really bad RF housekeeping engineering. Well, I'm sorry, in that situation, that it's simply not going to comply. So within those two extremes, and I know there's lots of different setups and, you know, people use stuff on caravans and when the field days, I know that. But I'm just saying, if you carry out good RF um, housekeeping, radio housekeeping, you've got a very, very good chance of complying with this. And I would emphasise that a lot. So on a simplistic level, then, you basically have to work out what antennas you're using. Yes. And use one of these tools, so either the, the Ofcom yes, tool yes. or a spreadsheet such as the, the one that you're putting together. Yes. Do those basic calculations and presumably what, take a sort of printed copy and keep it with your licence documents so if ever there's a knock on the door? Is that what we're talking? <laughs> you hope you never get a knock on the door. <laughs> I, I never have in 30 years, but yes, you, you've got you've hit the nail on the head. What you do is you print it off and then you put it in with your license and you forget about it. So if they come round, I guarantee you that's the first question. Well, there's two questions they're going to ask is, well, okay, it's an interference issue. Have you been keeping the log as you're required to do? And on the second thing is they say, have you carried out the RF assessment? If you have, I can assure radio amateurs they're in a much, much stronger position. You know, Ofcom will look kindly on that. Any regulatory body will look kindly as if you've tried to comply with whatever. I know it's unfortunate. I know radio amateurs are jumping up and down at the moment. And I'm pulling my hair out. I know that. But if you do the assessment, you give yourself a really good chance with Ofcom and they will look at it, look kindly on you and work it out from there. Okay. So, a silly question here. Uh, Amateur Radio has been around for 100 plus years. Yes. We've not had to do any of this. So, why why today? What has suddenly made us have the, the need to, uh, uh, to take all these measurements? Right. Um, this type of thing has been conducted in the States for ages. I can't give an exact date, but they've been doing it for ages. European countries have been doing it as well, and some are a lot, lot stricter. However, in this country, there's been a, a concern, and this is in the, the Ofcom document as well, that there's been a perceived concern. I'm emphasising the word perceived concern about 5G. Yeah. So obviously this is going to affect the amateur at home, but what about things yes. like field days? Presumably yes. a club yes. that's yes. planning a field day is going to have to do a risk assessment and I don't yes. know, what, what tape off the, the, the area that it's... No, it's, it's a case of doing the calculations first. Um, and then from the calculations, that will tell you what to do. If you, if you have to tape off areas, um, things like public access... Um, you know, are members of the public? That's right. It, in the in the standards, it talks about um, general public and workers. Um, we we have to use the the general public guidelines. Most amateur radio stations, providing they are set up correctly with good radio uh, engineering housekeeping, they will comply. There are a few exceptions where a station is very very high power and connected to a very very high gain antenna oh, there's going to be problems there so you need to do the calculations and once you've done the calculations that will tell you where to go okay so it, probably not too onerous but something we all obviously need to do to we need to do we're not in the 1950s we're in the year 2020 we all do have to do risk assessments at work and to be honest from what i've seen this was coming realistically uh, a should we start doing anything today and b when do you think this will be something that we need to comply to according right, to the, right, the... Right. i actually started the spreadsheet and i did the risk assessments for my local club three months ago yeah ahead um, of the game that's fair enough but it isn't it's not law yet is it it's not no not mandatory quite yet not quite yet but it, it certainly is coming in look guys this is this is coming um, I know radio amateurs don't like it. I've seen all the internet comments. 
Uh, I, I know exactly how people feel, you know, but the hit, this is where we are today. And all we can do is just do our very best to try and comply with it and put ourselves in a better position should, should we ever get a knock on the door. What I'd like to do, obviously, this, this, if this isn't quite law yet, what I'd like to do is catch up with you uh, in perhaps a few months. And if we could maybe work through an example, perhaps using the tool or using your spreadsheet, and we'll just sort of look at what best practice would actually be. Okay, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I think that just might help others out there that, that don't know what to do when it's suddenly imminent that we need to do it. I mean, what we really, lo- what I really would like to see on the market, and this is just an idea, you know, is something like an Android app where people can just download it on their phone, tap in the numbers. Now that I think will be a fantastic tool, and if someone out there can produce it, I'll be delighted. Excellent. Yes. Okay. Anyone uh, watching or listening uh, that can uh, churn out an app, uh, we'd like to hear from you. Yeah, please. I'll buy my pint. That's a promise. <laughs> Our thanks to Leslie at G0CIB for filling us in on what's new with this new rule that's likely to affect us all. For more information or to add your comment, go to our short link, sxham.uk forward slash EMF20. Thanks for watching. This feature was brought to you by Essex Ham.